uh, we are concentrating on cold chains and we are talking about big mega storage facility. Uh, we are ignoring that uh, almost uh, 80% of our uh, produce comes from micro and small uh, producers who can't be uh, having such facilities or having uh, such facilities available to them. The best is to concentrate on micro facilities at their doorstep. The venture capitalists uh, are looking at those uh, issues, but not at uh, standalone cold storage, which is the need of the hour. And uh, if somebody takes up the end-to-end -end, uh, logistic solution involving the micro and small cold storages along with the large ones at the hubs, I think it will make a wonderful uh, venture to invest in. Hello viewers, you are watching Mojo for Industry, India's first mobile journalism platform for industry. Cold chain is an essential integral element of growth in the food sector. Though India is a leading producer of agricultural produces, approximately 30% of the fruits and vegetables grown in India are wasted because of lack of cold storage facilities and transportation infrastructure. Today, we are joined by an industry veteran, Mr. Gopal Ahuja, Chairman at Komal Exotic Spices. He is the Chairman of Food Processing Committee of Indo-American Chamber of Commerce and also the Chairman of the India-Indonesia Business Association Agricultural Business, offering advice to the governments on trade banks. He will talk to us about the untapped opportunities in the food sector and allied industries. So welcome, Mr. Ahuja. Thank you. Thank you for having me with you. Would you like to uh, share your views on the cold chain related challenges for farm sector in India? There's a huge amount of wastage in spite of the fact that uh, almost uh, one fourth of the hungry or malnourished uh, people are in India all over the world. And uh, you can say that India is one of the largest producers of fruits and uh, vegetables and other uh, agri products. Almost 60% of our uh, GDP is coming in from agri-industry. In spite of that, there is a huge amount of uh, malnourishment and shortage of foods. Uh, purely, purely because from the point of production to the point of consumption, there is a huge uh, wastage. The supply chain is not efficiently managed due to various factors, but largely due to improper storage of these uh, products. So that's uh, one area which we are constantly endeavoring to improve and shall we strike the right balance, it will be a huge, huge uh, bonanza for the uh, country and for the food production uh, industry. When you say right balance, uh, what kind of initiatives can be taken to maintain this right balance between the all uh, stakeholders? Uh, we talk about cold chains, but we don't go into the nitty gritties of it. A uh, lot of these uh, uh, producing centers are in remote areas, still not well serviced by the infrastructure, either it's roads or electricity. So, Bigli Sadak and Pani, as we say, becomes a pole plank and that remains only during the elections. If we are able to strike a right balance between the uh, various producing centers and the processing industry, uh, it will reap a huge uh, bonus for us. Uh, we are concentrating on cold chains and we are talking about big mega storage facilities, but we are ignoring that uh, almost 80% uh, of our uh, produce comes from micro and small uh, producers who can't be uh, having such facilities or having uh, such facilities available to them. The best is to concentrate on micro facilities at their doorstep, whether it is processing or whether it is preserving. And preserving by means, I, I also mean that uh, putting in primary processes, huge cold storages may not be viable at times due to power supply issues, due to accessibility issues. So one would suggest that why don't you go for capacities of cold storages which are about 5 to 15 metric tons dependent not on compressors but on some other methodology of uh, using solar or some other uh, 
hot water techniques i am not very much deep into the techniques but there are uh, alternates available which could be uh, applied and this would lead to huge huge saving of the food huge uh, generation of employment and huge uh, allied services would be supported by this uh, approach almost 250000 micro uh, storage facilities with with temperatures of about 5 degrees celsius or there about uh, are in need of the hour today this is my understanding from the information that i glean from various uh, sources you said that micro cold storage uh, can be an answer to the challenges related to the lack of uh, cold storage facilities so do you have any successful case studies uh, to support this statement and case studies can be made available uh, definitely there are uh, actual numbers which have been surveyed and uh, brought out by certain uh, publication that 250000 micro uh, cold storages compressor less cold storages ranging from capacities of 5 to 15 uh, metric tons and uh, giving you a minimum temperature of uh, 5 degrees celsius a need of the hour and uh, leading to humongous employment opportunities for support sectors like processors and for uh, transporters and uh, so on and so forth the allied services for maintaining these cold storages so called micro cold storages uh, i am not saying that this is the uh, uh, solution but this is one of the front runners for the various alternatives which are being propagated today and i am inclined to believe that this should uh be a very uh, important and uh, should be given an, a serious thought and pursued by the authorities uh, at the center and in the states so the very uh, recent past government of india has taken a uh, few steps no uh, to strengthen the cold chain cold chain infrastructure uh, what sort of policy intervention is required to uh, in you no know, to strengthen it more government is in the right direction but it's still too little too slow i won't say that uh, these initiatives are not at all uh, good but there's no thrust there's too much of red tapeism still involved and too much of too many of conditions that are applied to availing uh, these uh, subsidies so to say and uh, uh, still the state governments have to fine tune their policies uh, there's uh, because the red tapeism uh i don't think many venture capitalists are uh, going to go about investing uh, in stand alone cold storages unless it's a uh, entire logistics uh, solution from end to end uh, the venture capitalists uh, are looking at those uh, issues but not at uh, stand alone cold storage which is the need of the hour and uh, if somebody takes up the end to end uh, logistics solution involving these micro and small cold storages along with the large ones at the hubs i think it will make a wonderful uh, venture to invest in and government's uh, support i would uh, request them besides uh, subsidized uh, subsidy in the form of uh, uh, capital uh, also supportive uh, tariff rates for the electricity consumed and most importantly uh, fast tracking the approvals Uh, that is the need of the hour so then again the another emerging sector is the consumer food retail, retail sector which has emerged during the past few years and especially during this lockdown and all how do you see the opportunities for refrigeration and cold chain industry in this particular area uh, uh, organized retail uh, is an ideal fit for this situation because uh, see organized retail is basically having just in time deliveries uh, you are optimizing the supply chain and to optimize the supply chain you should have products off the shelf stored somewhere not necessarily at the retail outlet so if it's a cold storage if it's a warehouse today you have softwares which are automatically generating the orders for movement and you have uh, stops at your fingertip you have uh, in and out dates you have uh, real time tracking of the uh, goods in transit so this is an ideal fit for uh, organized uh, retail trade and organized retail retail trade 
would would uh, definitely require this instead of operating through mandis they would prefer to operate through these uh, agglomeration or the uh, concentration centers where goods are uh, accumulated and dispatched at short notices and to reach the point of sale uh, just in time without causing any interruptions uh, this has helped us a lot in uh, covid times uh, online sales have been a big boon during covid uh, pandemic and uh, it was a blessing uh, one could say that online sales india was uh, quite quite ready with the digitization thanks to the efforts of uh, uh, honorable prime minister that the impetus given to the country uh, for digitization was quite helpful during the pandemic and this will go a long long way if one comes to actual hypermarkets and supermarkets scenario uh, so far as uh, agro products are concerned thanks so one quick look, a quick last question uh, we are at the end of 2020 uh, now uh, after a couple of months we are going to get the union budget so uh, what do we expect uh, you know what kind of policy announcement or intervention will actually be helpful for the farm sector as well in, in turn the cold chain sector contention today uh, the bone of contention today is more, more than the budget which is numbers uh, in terms of numbers uh, i'm sure government of india is doing all uh, necessary and uh, coming out with all the uh, ammunition and gunpowder at its disposal to appease the agitated farmers but it is uh, the policy which is more important rather than the numbers at this juncture in point the importance of budget has been minimized or diluted because there are so many announcements and policies uh, and uh, schemes uh, that are coming out throughout the year and it's good in a way that we are open to dynamic situation and real time uh, thinking is going on uh, at the powers uh, to be and uh, we need not lay too much of stress on the budget because it's an we have realized the situation demands ongoing uh, uh, adaptation to the situation and uh, numbers are being uh, given a go by whether it's a fiscal deficit or whether it is uh, uh, funds allocated to a particular scheme or uh, Uh, plan so number wise it has to be good no doubt for the farm sector uh, looking at the mood of the farming sector at the moment uh, but more than numbers it is the policy which will play an important and crucial role so viewers so with that we wrap on today's interaction with mr gopal ahuja thank you mr ahuja for being on the show today and giving a detailed insight on the untapped opportunities in the food sector and allied industries viewers stay tuned for many such informative interactions and please don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel and press the bell icon goodbye